Okay. Let me. <clears throat> <clears throat> so let me read this support for uh the theory of Elohim creating humans uh, can be found here just additional evidence um, <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> there is conflict on Earth between two NHI non human intelligence groups. This is a, um, a, a perhaps a simplistic view. This conflict is described in, in the Bible. This conflict is between the Terran reptilians and the extraterrestrial Elohim. What is the cause of this conflict? <coughs> the cause of this conflict is the creation of humanity and its continual genetic modification. We humans are the cause of the conflict between these two advanced intelligent beings. Think about that. The war on planet Earth is between is due to the fact that we are created. <laughs> I think we humans are the invading force. The Elohim are colonizing planet Earth through us. The native Terran reptilians are fighting uh, back against this colonization, as you would expect. It's like a <clears throat> the natives fighting back against the colonizers. It's that kind of uh, clash of civilizations. You can think of it that way. Maybe there is a truce between the Terran reptilians and the Elohim and... Uh, humans though i think humans are kind of in the middle this is a difficult situation i don't know who to support i think there might be factions and alliances between members of each of these groups making things more complicated but i don't know the full story here this war is being fought in the background this cold war between these three species, as well as other NHI who may have arrived on this planet. <coughs> Maybe the greys, I don't know. This is a very complicated web. It seems to be the case that some Elohim have destroyed previous versions of humanity in the past. We humans may have some Elohim as allies. Uh, the Elohim cannot be regarded as a monolithic group. See Lucifer rebelling from the other Elohim as an example. Fallen angels. Uh, fallen angels can be seen as allies to humanity. <coughs> that's another question here. Are our bodies... So that's sort of like a materialistic in the present universe kind of understanding that's all happening in our dimension of reality that dimension of space time that's kind of that that kind of view now let's think about the interdimensional aspects are our bodies consciousness assisted technology do we have souls on other planets in other star systems in this or other dimensions controlling our bodies you know, think of like, uh, you know, like in a video game, there's an artificial world and you as the, you take on the role of a character and you're <laughs> moving through the virtual world. So if you think of, so you can think of the universe as some kind of a virtual world that is being uh, created by an intelligent species that's in another dimension. 
Um, <clears throat> uh, now when we think about another way to look at our bodies, like maybe do we have counterparts in the Aldebaran star system, you know, the, where the Elohim originated, manipulating our bodies through the technology of consciousness to terraform this planet from afar. Like, uh, you know, <clears throat> we are incarnated in, in, in human bodies and, and through, you know, the, the labor force, the society, the politics, the, this planet is being transformed, uh, you know, technologically so that um, this planet is going to be made more like the planet in the Aldebaran system. So it's like... <laughs> It's like an invasion through uh, a genetic modification uh, of the species on this planet. And another way I was thinking about it is was what if like the creator of the universe, because let's think of that I was an advanced being, uh, is creating the galaxies, the stars, the planets, and it's all being done by intelligent design. That like this is not just some random kind of nature thing that but it's actually being uh, controlled it's a controlled intelligently directed process you know i think that's i think that's what's happening so <clears throat> it's like we're all part of an interconnected system if we are being used to terraform this planet as i believe to be the case then by whom is a question to ask some aliens have described us as soul containers. A uh, good video on this concept. And here is where I got it from. Yeah, that's an interesting video. Are these the Atlanteans? What is that about? Okay. Oh yeah, this, this is about the Roswell crash. Uh, this is about the regarding bodies discovered at Roswell crash in 1947-ish, I think. Um, <clears throat> I think I think I think the P, I think some of these UFOs are. It's my speculation are being driven by the humans of Atlantis, the sixth version of humanity, and um, uh, yeah, okay, here's another theory. The deep state cabal may be abducting children or creating children in, in vitro with modified DNA to create humans with enhanced psychic ability in order to operate the craft and weapons needed to fight the Elohim when they come back to Earth around 2030 to 2033. This is where some of the human tra trafficking goes to. These people are being taken to underground bases to be used as laborers to build infrastructure and train as soldiers to prepare for the future war. <coughs> the CIA is involved in this. Uh, 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 you know, there there was that, uh, you know, there was that uh, Marine who witnessed this now aircraft, this, this UFO, and it was in Indonesia around, I think this is what's happening. I think the CIA is abducting uh, uh, children or uh, human trafficking, and I think even in World War II, um, I think a lot of the people who were trafficked by the Nazis to the Antarctica or the bases to create this breakaway civilization. And I think they might the, have been working in cooperation with the reptilians and all that to prepare for this war. Uh, you know, that's a, an optimistic view, I guess, if you're pro-humanity. If this is the case, uh, they should do this in the open. This is my criticism. They should tell humanity what they are doing so everyone can prepare and there wouldn't have to be events like 9-11, Lahaina, all these useless wars to distract us from what's really going on. Is this evidence of the Cabal's plans to depopulate the Earth through infertility? Notice the serpent symbol. Um, 
you know, you know the cure. <laughs> um, that's sort of like a dark view and an anti-humanity view. This is all kind of disconnected thoughts. Um, it's been said the cabal tells you in advance what it is about to do for karmic reasons. This is viewed as informed consent. If you tell the people in advance what is about to happen to them, the term hidden in plain sight comes to mind. The cure designed to depopulate the earth as much as possible because the... In, um, okay, so the this is, this is a uh, anti-humanity... Uh, view of the intentions of the cabal or the people of uh, Antarctica. Um, the cure is designed to depopulate the earth as much as possible because the OM are coming back and humanity has no chance to fight back. So the mass die-off can be seen as a form of global human euthanasia, sort of compassionate death instead of having to face a possibly brutal end, war, brutal end through war, earthquakes, caused by weather weapons. Is this this mud flood thing? Is this evidence of the Great Flood? No, this is, this is I just saw this on Twitter. It's like, our real enemies, if you want to frame them that way, are what I'd like to call the people of Antarctica. This is an alliance of the Terran Reptilians, Fallen Angels, Elohim, Atlanteans, the previous humans, Secret Space Program, think about Operation Paperclip, after World War II, Nazis in, in Antarctica and in Argentina, and banks, intelligence agencies. It's not simply the Chinese or the Russians. I believe these people control Putin and, and G. The wars are a distraction. A pro-humanity view, they are preparing for a war with the Elohim. Anti-humanity view, they are pushing for the extinction of humanity to spare the surface humans from the war with the Elohim. Okay. So, uh, things are like, I don't have all the, like, this is some of my thoughts. I mean, I, there is a deep state cabal and they are in antarctica and 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 in other places on earth and these people aren't just humans they are non-human entities and and i think the list of the files is correct the bible is correct the serpent the reptilian uh, and you can see religious uh, you know people worshiping the reptile uh, you know this reptilian worship type of thing in various religions on earth so, there is a non-human intelligence, but I don't know, the, I'm trying to figure out the details, and that's difficult to come by. Um, and I think there is another force. The, this force is like a, like a, like some kind of an intelligence that is in another dimension, perhaps. And uh, this is like a shapeshifter, if you... I've heard stories where the UFOs, they, the UFOs some, sometimes mimic the appearance of actual craft. And I think this this entity is like, uh, it exists in another dimension and it's playing games with humanity. So you have this trickster kind of thing. <laughs> so we've got beings that are like in our dimensions and we've got beings that are in other dimensions and we've got the source which is the original creator of the universe and there was this uh there's a discussion of the moon as a uh, like as a spaceship i haven't finished washing uh, i mean watching this video but uh as a conscious sentient spaceship and i think there's uh, this idea of, of of our bodies dna technology creating like a fractal of source and this and this and this like some of the craft being described as organic and alive and i think this idea that 
there is technology that creates uh that has the capacity to create a copy a fractal of source the original creator which is like a conscious soul thing and you create fractals using the technology of dna and using some kind of other technology to create planets so the planets are like kind of alive but they're existing on different levels and different time like maybe the planets experience time in a way that's def very different to the way we do it maybe if we do it from for a galaxy uh, like the time the galaxy experiences is different to the like you know, it might be moving fast, <laughs> whereas from our perspective, the galaxy is moving so slow. And 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 if you look at an electron, the electron is moving so fast from our perspective, from our dimension of existence. Time moves in a certain way, but in the perspective of an electron, f like for the electron, this time, if you can, if you can imagine yourself as an electron, you're moving around. In a, in a certain speed and the speed would be similar to the way we experience time but from our perspective the electron is moving really fast and from our perspective the planets are moving so slow but if you imagine yourself as the planet you're moving at the same speed as we experience time you know so the time is relative depending on the size or the mass maybe of the thing so time can be seen as a constant but depending on what kind of being you are uh like the like you know like all beings experience time at, at the same at the same rate but from the perspective of uh so let, let's imagine if you were a planet okay the planet will consider the speed at which humans are moving as so fast compared to the speed at which the planet is existing at you see if you look at our cells our cells are moving so fast compared to the way we move and operate so time can be seen as some kind of a universal constant but it, it, depending on but it's but it's observed differently from different points of view i wonder if i'm making sense <laughs> this is a theory i'm just sort of saying but um, that's my theory, and I, I don't know if I heard it somewhere else. I might have heard it, but I don't know. But uh, that was not discussed here. In this here, the time was not discussed here. But this is a, a discussion of uh, this idea of a fractal of the the, the idea the fractal of source. I think this is a this is a pretty accurate. Oh, I think this this concept of a fractal, like DNA creating a, a soul container, creating a fractal of like the a copy of the whole. So in a way, if you want to know how God is, you you look yourself look at yourself in the mirror. You will have an idea what God is like, or a part of God, or how God looks like if god is expressed manifested through the through human dna if you look at all the animals this is how the source looks like when it's expressed through the dna of a cat or a dog you know source is manifested source is manifested differently through uh, the technology of DNA, or uh, maybe there's a technology of planets and stars. So all of these are the sources expressed differently, and you can see how these things can be conscious in their own different ways. And we can be seen as uh, as AI bots, you know. Uh, um self-aware replicating bots <laughs> like nanobots uh, ai bots and we're all uh, performing a certain role you know if you if you look at how animal behave animals behave in groups uh, you know they're programmed they have a certain instinct conditioning uh, and we have 
you know, our own conditioning, programming. <laughs> and maybe the reason we might have to die off <laughs> is because in order for this planet to evolve, you need to have more of a... You need... Because the humans at the moment are very fear-based. We are very afraid. We are, you know, like... So that can... So out you can't create a society that can take use of advanced technology such as some of these free energy devices that can potentially blow up the planet you can't give that technology to to beings who are very frightened and who are self-interested and you know look at how we're so paranoid we we we, we build walls we have guns and rightly so, because we are living with, with humans and all humans are afraid of each other. So in that kind of an environment, you, if you introduce free energy, these devices that, you know, like the, that can be weaponized, the, you're holding the evolution of humanity back. But if you create human beings who don't think like that, who don't have that programming, who don't have that fear-based instinct to you know f that that fight fighting is in if you if you if you create a version of humanity who doesn't think like that then you can introduce these advanced technologies for you know medical purposes free energy because you're not going to be worried that these beings are going to start fighting with each other but because humans on the planet right now, the seventh version of humanity is very fearful, the evolution of the planet, of the civilization, may require either our extinction and genetic transformation, and all of these could be going together. Maybe the depopulation agenda is to reduce the fear-based humans, the seventh version of humanity, and replace them with a type of human that is not so fear fear driven and then when you create these new types of humans you can start introducing more advanced technologies uh no that's kind of one view i guess yeah <laughs>